it is Aliki here and from safety to best time to visit to how to get around, I have you covered. So let's dive into it. Before you actually can enjoy Mexico, you have to get in and no worries. Although there are some exceptions for most citizens, you can easily enter Mexico and you can stay up to 180 days. You can extend your stay in Mexico for longer, but then you will need to apply for specific permits. Online, you will see that there is this form discussed that apparently is given to you on upon your arrival and you need to keep it and you need to show it when you leave. But in my personal experience, I wasn't, I, no one gave me anything. I just entered the country, uh, so I had nothing. I just left, so it was easy peasy. There are no special requirements uh, for entering regarding vaccines. The official currency is Mexican peso and I do highly recommend you to change the money in advance or upon your arrival because yes, American dollar is accepted, especially in like these very uh, tourist areas, uh, but the exchange rate will be so, so bad. And the farther you're going to go away from the tourist areas, the less chance the American dollars will be accepted. So I think just having a cash with you, you know, Mexican pesos with you will be the best way how to enjoy Mexico. Because with the card, you can also pay a lot with the card. It's very easy, but in a lot of places, they will charge you extra if you pay with a card. I personally was using card when I could, when I wasn't charged extra. And then the pesos I was taking out of the ATMs because at the end of the day, I feel like the best exchange rate for me was when I was just taking money out with my international card and taking money out in pesos. I did not find an ATM in Mexico that was free. Unfortunately, all the ATMs in Mexico that I used uh, did charge me, but the charges from two to five dollars. So obviously, if you try to, you know, take the money out uh, not so often, then it won't be such a big cut. All right, a big, big topic questions that I usually get about Mexico is the safety. And please, please, as I say in all my videos about Mexico, don't be discouraged about what you see in media and you know the reality is so different i genuinely feel like mexico has been one of the safest countries i've been in a long time so if you've been following my journey i've spent six months in south america and six months in central america and really mexico does feel like a really organized amazing safe country to be in of course the country is huge and there are areas that are not as safe uh, there are specific activities happening, uh, but I think as long as you do your, your research, um, there are a lot of beautiful places that are touristic for a reason. And in the touristic areas, it's completely safe. It's completely fine. Just use your common sense. Don't wander around in the late hours. Don't be the only person on the street. But those are just like a general travel rules that I follow in any country. And yeah, you'll be completely fine. If you still don't feel confident enough and you, you want to visit Mexico, then the two safest cities I recommend are Mexico City and Merida. And then purely from my personal experience, I also think the whole Caribbean coast, you know, Tulum, Playa del Carmen, Cancun, those are like super, super touristic areas. And unless you purposely are looking for some travel, I think the travel will never find you. All right, the biggest surprise for me was that Mexico actually, in Mexico you have four different time zones. So yeah, if you're planning to visit several places, you know, around the country, make sure you follow all the time zone changes so, you know, you don't mix it up. And I think actually this is most importantly for those travelers who fly into Cancun, because Cancun is such a big airport, so many flights, cheap, good flights. So you can see how a lot of people fly into Cancun and then go to other places. And then if you go to Yucatan, which is a state just like an hour right away from Cancun airport, but there is like a one hour change. So yeah, you definitely don't want to be like mixed up uh, like mix up this one hour and then miss your flight. Um, so yeah, those people flying into Cancun, going to Yucatan, uh, those need to be extra cautious with the time change. The language, of course, is Spanish language and you probably wonder, can I get by with some basics? Uh, you know, do people speak English? Yes, especially in touristic areas, everyone speaks English, you know, more or less, but you can communicate easily. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Obviously, the more rural you go, the more, you know, less touristic areas, um, the less chance people are going to speak English. But I think 95% of the time, whenever, you know, going bus stations, airports, you know, cafes, restaurants, hospitality, all that, people do speak or at least understand English so you can communicate. 
But of course, I always personally recommend to do have some basics because it's not just about communicating or for you getting by in the country. I think you just enjoy the country, the culture, the place so much more if you do speak at least some basic Spanish. This point will be more for my European viewers because for Americans this won't be a surprise, but Mexico has adopted the American tipping style and so really the tips I would say are like mandatory, like they are not mandatory, but like they really are. So because people are gonna come to you and they're not gonna say, oh, would you like the tip or would you like to leave a tip or should I include a tip? They'll be like, okay, uh, you wanna leave 10, 15 or 20%. So you are in this situation where you can't really say, oh, you know, I'm not gonna tip. You, you have to tip, that's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, for, for Americans, I guess it's normal, but for us Europeans, uh, that was like a bit, at the end of, you know, after the one month in Mexico, I realized that whenever I think I'm going to be paying, that's not what I'm going to be paying because I will be definitely charged an extra charge, like extra uh, when my bill comes. The average tip in Mexico will be around 15%. Mexico is quite a developed country. The roads are good. So buses go, you know, to and from most cities. And you can also use the night bus that is really comfortable. So yeah, I think the cheapest, best way how to get around the country and like in between the cities would be with the bus. A very popular option actually in Mexico is also colectivos, which is basically like a minivan and then you travel with other people. And I know it's quite popular, but actually I personally never used it. So I can't really comment on that too much. If you have to travel uh, from city to city that are really, really far away, like 20 hour bus ride, then actually I recommend you checking um, internal flights because sometimes they have some really good deals and good prices. For example, I flew from Oaxaca to Cancun for only $50, which just saved me so much time and energy. And I would say probably money-wise, it wasn't even way more expensive than like paying for two buses. And the whole bus ride would take me more than 20 hours. So it was definitely a very good uh, choice. And within the cities, uh, I've already commented this in, in one, one of my other Mexico videos, but I do highly recommend using Uber rather than the local taxis because first of all, local taxis will, will charge you way more. And that's just standard. But also, I think, I think actually after traveling one year through South and Central, I feel like Uber is the safest option how to travel around there because you have data of your driver, you know how much you're gonna pay, you know, it's all tracked. So I really genuinely, from my personal experience, traveling for a year through this side of the world is Uber all the way. Because in no way I wanna say that the local taxi is bad, uh, but I have heard of scams. I know people who've told me stories how they've been scammed. So thankfully nothing too major, but I have heard the bad comments about local taxis and again in every city the legit taxi is they all are in the same color and so wherever you go you need to know in which color is the legit taxi so you definitely need to do a bit of a research before you pick a taxi and i feel like uber is just way more easier you just have the app you use it everywhere it's safe it's good so definitely uber over local taxi but yeah, as I said, if you do, if you are in a situation where Uber doesn't work or forever, forever, whichever re other reason you need to take a taxi, make sure it's the legit one. It's within the official colors and all the taxis, all the local taxis have to have displayed somewhere in the screen or in the back seat or whatever have, um, they have to display the registration number or like the certificate, you know, that they are like officially legit. So if you don't see that, then don't use that taxi. The best time to visit Mexico is from November to April. That period is the dry season in Mexico, so you're gonna have less rain, less clouds, like much drier weather, so definitely a safe shout. Said that, you know, Mexico is just like all year round destination, the weather is great all year, it's just that it's better during uh, from November till April, but I personally traveled Mexico for two months from May, like beginning of May until end of June and it was still amazing. Of course, we had a few rainy days, but it's so, so warm that like it doesn't matter really. So yeah, I didn't travel through the peak season and it was still good. So yeah, packing for Mexico is quite easy because it's always warm and nice, but there are a few things that I think are a must and I have prepared the whole other video of, you know, what to pack for Central America, what to pack for Mexico. So if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna link it somewhere up here and also in the description.
I feel like this is a basic advice in any country, but in Mexico, please do not drink tap water. How spicy is spicy? And I have to tell you from my personal experience, if you ask for something a bit, a little bit spicy, it's gonna come super spicy. So I just, I was always just ordering mild, no spicy, because even if you order mild or no spicy, the food is still gonna be like a bit spicy, but like that perfect, you know, perfect spicy for those who can't deal with a lot of spice. And also whenever they, like whenever you order the food, they first gonna bring you like these, like little sauces on the table and they all are fire. Like they, they all are crazy spicy. So unless you can deal with the spice well, I would be very, very cautious of trying anything that's been offered to you in Mexico. Because yeah, I was traveling there and I thought it's all the stereotypes and all that, but no, it's real. It's exactly like that. Like not spicy, spicy and spicy is like super, super, super spicy. In Mexico, they use uh, this plug, so these two parallel things, uh, the same like in America. So yeah, if you are from Europe, uh, you will need an adapter. So these were the main things I would recommend to anyone going to Mexico. So, you know, backpackers, going, anyone, go, anyone going for two weeks for a holiday. But I just want to comment quickly on a drone situation for all my fellow content creators. Unfortunately, foreigners can't fly and film drone in Mexico. So yeah, very sad news for those, you know, traveling with a little travel drones, wanting to film in any other country you can film, but in Mexico, you will need to apply for special permits. So yeah, I think I kind of covered everything that was important for me that I think was important to share with you. Um, if I have forgot anything, please comment below. As always, I read all the comments. I answer all the comments. I love to interact with you guys. So yeah, if you have any extra questions, please drop them in the comments below. I have a whole separate Mexico travel playlist on my channel, uh, so if you want to get some inspiration for some location, places, activities, make sure to check it out.